Hi everyone. So the question comes up um, a few times about the length of pole weapons, the length of staves, the length of spears, uh, halberds, pole axes and so on. Um, so I thought I'd just say a little bit about the range of uh, pole arm lengths that you generally find in, in European uh, fencing treatises and also uh, just generally in, in manuscripts and so on. Um, so let's start with the quarter staff. The quarter staff generally uh, in European sources is shown to be about seven or eight feet long. So one of the guides that George Silver gives is you put your hand up and uh, as far as you can reach up to the top of it with your hand, that's about the length that you want of a quarter staff. So for me, uh, I guess that's probably about uh, seven and a half feet long, something like that. Um, uh, in terms of spears, uh, there seem to have in the high middle ages been two types of spear, known as a short spear and a long spear. Uh, there were pikes, but I'll talk about those in a second. Um, so long spears seem to have usually been about, uh, probably talking about nine feet long uh, on average, uh, and short spears were around six feet long. And you know, there's a famous, uh, say five or six feet long, um, there's a famous um, bit mentioned in uh, Foissart in regards to, uh, I believe it's the Battle of Poitiers, uh, where uh, he says that the French knights were ordered to shorten their lances um, to advance on foot. Uh, and this is interesting uh, for those of us who study Fiore, because in Fiore he specifically refers to the, the short spear. And the spear that he shows being used is actually only about as tall as he is, so, you know, say six, six feet, or probably less in his case. Um, so uh, there was a short spear and there was a long spear. Uh, What's the difference? Generally it seems that short spears um, and shorter pole arm palms were preferred by people in full armour because in full armour you're more likely to end up closer to your opponent and you're wanting to use both ends of the weapon um, in, in armoured fighting to try and get into the gaps uh, of, of the person's armour, armpits and groin and, and behind the gauntlets and so on um, and also using it as essentially as a wrestling assist to help trip and, and throw someone over onto the floor. Um, so you've got, uh, and also if we, another short pole arm that fits into the arm and fighting category of course is the pole axe. Um, so you could say that a pole axe is essentially a bit like a short halberd they're usually made in different ways, fabricated in different ways, but essentially you're talking about, you know, a sort of an axe or a hammer face on one side and a spike or a hammer face on the other side with a long spike at the top. And in the case of the pole axe, it's a shorter, it's usually about six feet, five feet, six feet long, um, sometimes a bit longer, but not usually, um, uh, with a spike on both ends because, of course, it's a relatively short weapon, so you want to be able to turn, turn it around and use both ends fairly easily. Um, the uh, longer pole weapons, like the long spear and of course pikes, tend not to have anything on the, on the butt end uh, because you can't turn a very long weapon around to use the butt end very easily. Although I know there are exceptions to that, especially in the ancient world, where I do know that some pikes did have a, a, a pointed sort of shoe on, on the butt end. Um, so looking at pikes, the, the conventional length of pikes in the medieval or late medieval and renaissance world seems to have been around 16 feet long, which is pretty long and that's uh, pretty much as long as, as pole arms get. Um, so uh, halberds, uh, halberds and partisans uh, and bills uh, were weapons used by, um, you get uh, spontoons and spetums and rasa and other types of, there's, there's an, a, a massive number of, of these kind of pole weapons used by lighter armoured or, or non-armoured uh, infantry uh, in the later medieval period mostly, although these weapons were around earlier but they really came to the fore in the 15th century and then particularly in the 16th century. Um, uh, and uh, these tend to be about eight feet long. So really you've got a range from at the shortest end of the pole arm uh, spectrum, you've got things that are about five foot long five, six foot long, for fight, usually for fighting in armour. The exception to that are civilian walking sticks, uh, like the, the Grand Baton, uh, for example, uh, which is essentially a, a walking stick, uh, so shorter than a quarter staff, something that won't raise suspicion uh, or be viewed as a weapon necessarily, but that you can defend yourself with very adequately. Uh, and incidentally, that's a similar kind of length to the musket with bayonet attached. Um, so you've got these, yeah, these armoured, generally speaking, armoured fighting pole arms are generally about the height of a person, uh, perhaps a bit shorter. 
Then you go on to the, the lighter armoured uh, infantry tends to have in the medieval and renaissance world, tend to have pole arms which are about um, 7 feet, 8 feet long, this kind of length, perhaps 9 feet long for a lighter uh, pole arm like a spear. Um, and then you've got uh, pikes which are up at uh, kind of 16 feet long. Um, so they're the kind of range of, of pole arm lengths and quarterstaffs were generally from 6 feet to 8 feet long. Thank you.